Hey guys, so we've been messing around with some traps um, and our health pickups. We're now going to go through and create something a little bit different. We're going to be making an enemy that chases you and attacks you. So for that, uh, we're pretty lucky. Unreal Engine has some good features around this. So if I left click on this and go Control C, um, I'm then going to go to my Blueprints folder and press Control V. I'm going to rename this. Um, and for me, it's pretty easy. Um, Tiger enemy is what I'm going to call mine. You do have to rename it. It's really important or else it'll start getting confused between which character you're talking about. Okay, so after doing that, I can open this up and you'll see though, it's all the code we've done previously, which is what's really helpful. So we wanna make sure we keep this code um, and we're using this in a new player character. Okay, um, next step that I need to do though, is actually get my sprites in. So if I open my sprite um, thing up, my folder up there, thing, folder up, and we're gonna make enemy. We're gonna open this up. All right, and you've probably seen me do this a million billion times. Um, what I'm actually going to be doing is bringing in my my sprite sheets that I'm going to be using. So opening that up, and then we're, what we're going to be doing is right clicking, and we're going to be applying 2D paper texture. Right clicking again, and we'll be extracting our sprites, and you'll see there that all the nice yellow squares around them. Make sure that they do have those hard lines, that's important, or else it will connect two together and be super frustrating. You have to go back into Photoshop and mess with that again. Um, and we need some extra folders now. We need idle. We need walking, which I probably won't use all of these animations. Um, but it's good to have them there just in case I do want to change it. Uh, running. And then our final one we're going to have is the one we're going to be messing with the most is our attack animation. And then just making sure getting the appropriate animations in the right spot. That's our idle. Um, you can see here that it's picked up one pixel or something that I've obviously missed. Uh, we had a walking animation and running animation and finally a attacking animation. Sweet. So now everything kind of set up where it needs to be. Um, obviously the only thing we need to do now is create our flipbooks. So we've got, um, try to make sure, just because um, you obviously have two different um, sprites in there now, so you need to make sure you're naming things correctly or else you might, when you try to put in walk, you might accidentally pick the little blue ninja guy that we're using as their main character. Um, um, so you've got to be careful of that running uh, again so when we're setting our running animation um, this could obviously be a bit quicker so it could be that quick but I'm actually going to slide down a little bit and this is simply because it being an enemy character I do actually want my player to be able to outrun this character so making him look like he's running a little bit slower is important and again, just left clicking and then holding down shift and then clicking on the alternating side. Look at that, looks like he's having a bit of a seizure, so we need to make sure we add quite a few extra frames on this one. That's better. All right. And final one, oh, I've accidentally got a way out of that, is the attacking one. So this is going to be a bit of a poor swipe attack. Um, but again, very, very quick. So slowing it down. Cool. 
And that's actually pretty good. Sweet. Uh, cool. So let's get out of that. Still got our code up here because we are going to have to edit um, quite a few different things. Um, but right now we can actually go to our viewport and you see here that it's still got our idle animation from our um, player character. But what I'm going to mess with first is I'm actually going to put in the tiger idle animation. And you can see there that it's actually quite large. You compile and save that. Now, easiest way to do this is to double check when it's actually in our game. So what I'm gonna do is go to Blueprints. I'm actually gonna drag our tiger enemy in. And you can see there, he is ginormous. So that's why, open that up, and then we can go back to our viewport here and we can start messing with his actual size. So you can see that scale is 11 um, for some reason. If I take that down to three, compile, save, play. Let's see how big he is. Can't see him yet, so maybe he's tiny. And the tiger's disappeared. All right, actually, we definitely don't. That was a bit of a waste of time. What we might do is have him over here so we can see him in relation to our character. You can see there that it's actually not a bad size. Do want him bigger than a character, or is not really much of a threat? So what I might do though is just take him in 2.5. Compile, save. Let's see how that's looking now. Make it so he looks like he's standing. Yep, cool, I'm happy with that. Um, next thing we're actually gonna do is add in some things. So if I go over here, you can see this, um, capsule component isn't fitting fantastically and you see this one makes it go up and down this one makes it go sideways so I'm actually not too stressed about having that because the main point of this is that I want him to be attacking us not us attacking him um, which you guys will be able to figure out how to do later on anyway um, so what I might actually do is add a couple things here that I'm gonna then code all at once afterwards okay so First thing I'm actually going to do is click on the tiger itself in the top left there. We're going to add a sphere collision. Sweet. And we're going to make that, what do I make, like a 20? I think. Yeah, cool, 20. So this is so that when we code it, if we're inside this sphere, it's going to walk at us and attack our person. Um, so we've done that. But we haven't actually dictated where the area of attack is. Um, so if I click up here, we're going to add a box collision. Let's move this over here. And let's make it a little bit bigger. We might make it three. No, we will not. We'll make it two. All right, and so you can see there, um, when it swipes its paw, it's going to be in that um, kind of area, which I can make it squish down a little bit, and then I'll make it a little bit more accurate. Cool, and I'm happy with that. Um, a way to check whether this box is appropriate is actually to, um, if I go to Sprite, and I can change my flipbook to Tiger Attack, and you can see that he's actually in that zone, which I need to move a little bit forward, and you can see that I'm on the edge of the paw, so it's in there and it's running that attack animation, it is good. So I'm gonna change that back to Idle now which I've just realized I've spelled wrong again, but that is okay. All right, so we've got a, um, we've got the appropriate flipbook going at the moment. We've got a attacking space and we've got a kind of hunting sphere all set up there. So I'm gonna compile and save before we crash. Um, all right, so now what we need to do is start messing with some stuff in terms of, we're actually gonna get, get rid of some things more than anything. So at the moment, We've already got a player character setting our HUD, so we can delete that. Um, like I said previously, this is actually, for me, it's gonna be a um, more of a parkour running game. Um, so I can get rid of that, and I can actually also get rid of all of the death animation stuff as well, and get rid of that. Uh, actually also don't need the health, because we're not going to be attacking the tiger. Let's move. Let's make that a little bit neater. 
Sweet. All right, cool. Um, what we actually do need, though, is a couple of different um, variables for this to work. Um, and we can actually leave that variable there. We don't... Uh, probably good practice to delete it because we're not using that variable in here. Um, but I'm going to leave it anyway because we will learn by doing, you know. So now what I'm going to be doing is adding some variables. And the first variable we're going to add in is our attack variable that we haven't added previously. All of these as well are going to be booleans, so that will be fine. Next one we need to add is um, is overlapping, and then is overlapping poor. All right, cool. So we've got a couple of different bits there that are all set up, ready to go. Um, what we need to do now though is actually set um, first things first, like I've given a demonstration before when just putting in a um, different sprite sheet, no, not sprite sheet, uh, flip book, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, you just swap them all over up here because we're doing an update animation. So if we're not moving, we want it to be idle, um, we want tiger running because the running one was so much more nice and dramatic, which I didn't set properly, so that's frustrating. Um, I'll save. Um, so we've got that setting. So in the tick update animations, it then goes from there, update to here, and that's how we get our different um, animations that way. But we need to add a couple things in. So first thing we're gonna do is add a custom event add custom event, and we're going to name that ATK for attack. Um, I might move this down a little bit, and we're actually going to be adding some stuff at the top of that, so I'll raise that up a little bit, because it's all in the update animation section. Um, and what we need to do now is add in a, another input action. Well, I think I'm jumping a little bit ahead of myself. So, what we need to do is go down here, and what we're actually going to do is add some code in. So, we're going to actually call on this attacking animation. So, first thing we need to know is if we are overlapping and if we're attacking. So, got our event tick. I'm going to move that way up here. I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to get rid of that node there. Um, and then I'm going to hold B and left click and that adds a branch. I told you guys a couple videos ago that there was a shortcut to that and I figured it out. Um, we're going to have is overlapping is going to be the um, condition for this. And then what we're going to add after that is we need to be casting to our 2D side scroller character. To 2D side scroller character. Cool. Um, and we're also going to get player character. Get our player character as well as our object. Cool. So, what we've done so far is if it's true and we're overlapping, we are going to do something. If it is not true, if it's false, we are going to branch down into and next one, and that is going to be to attack. So branch cool condition is attack. So we're going to drag over get attack from there. Uh, and then we're going to move on through to calling a custom event. What if I PTK? Cool, that'll call it. Just there. Sweet. I might actually try to move these down a little bit. So it fits in a little bit better there. Cool, trying to keep this neat, but it will get a little bit messy because we are adding in quite a few things. Uh, from that, we're going to execute. If it's false, we're going to update our animation. All right. So. We're checking if we're overlapping, we're checking if we're attacking, we can run. If it's true, we're running our attack animation that we need to set up up here. Um, 
which I guess we could do that now. Um, no, we'll do the big bit of code first. All right. So next thing we need to do, so from our 2D side scroller character, we are going to get a capsule component. Get capsule component. We're then going to do a couple of dictating. So we're gonna we're gonna get our world location a couple of times. So right clicking, get world location. That one there. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit first. So we're over here, and we're gonna right click on return value. And we're gonna split our structure pin. And then gonna control C V and get two of these and put one up here and I'm going to try to neatly put the other one below it and that should be okay. Uh, we're going to drag down from our capsule component up here and put that one in there. Okay, we're then going to go, so what we're trying to say here is when we're actually minusing our capsule components together, what's going to happen? So um, we're going to go float minus float Float minus float, cool. Um, we need to then come out of both of the X axes because that's what we're running on. Um, and then we're gonna move on through to the float if greater than. Where is that symbol gone? Cool, and we're using that one just there. All right, and greater than zero, it's gonna keep moving towards people. So if it's, Go here and we'll put in a branch. Lift that up a little bit. All right. So now what we're, we're trying to say now is if they're overlapping um, so that they, no. So it's moving if it's less than zero, greater than zero, sorry. Um, so we're gonna go, oh, actually this is probably easier if I just drag off biz move right. Set that one up a little bit and set that as well all right and then attaching both of these biz move right is obviously our condition so we don't need to do that true and then finally we're going to add movement input uh, that's the bottom one just there and we're going to attach both of these because um, it's pretty well going to be moving anyway. Scale value is from our float minus float. Double checking that's right there. Might lift this down a little bit just so we try to keep everything neatly and so I can see where all of my code's going. Um, but like I said, we are getting a little bit messy. We then need to actually do something. We need to make sure this runs afterwards as well. So what I'm actually gonna do is then attach this to the, the, the next branch over, that's the one. So once that's done, whoops, didn't mean to left click then. Once that's done, it can go back over there. So we're running through that and then coming back because we've run through our true, we're then moving on to the next part, all right? Brilliant. Uh, we now need to delete some other things as well. Um, really quickly because we actually don't need this. We don't have a controller for this point. It's walking around by itself. So I'm gonna quickly delete these. Uh, and actually, delete these as well. Yep. Uh, make rotation, yep, get rid of that as well. Cool. So we've got these left over and we're gonna set, we're gonna manually set actor rotation. Sweet. Uh, so we're gonna have one of those here and we're going to control C, V and get another one for down here. Um, not sure how to get rid of that. Can I move it? Yeah, I'll just move it out of the way. Move that one and we'll move this one as well. So neither of them are in the way. And we'll move this over a bit. Cool, so now we've neaten that up a little bit. We've got that set to go. And then adding our purple onto there, purple onto there, and then adding the white ones up to the top. Cool. 
That actually does. That actually doesn't look too messy. I mean, I know I'm obviously judging myself, but not too bad. All right, brilliant. So that is all set there. So it's automatically setting active rotation um, in relation to um, where we are and stuff. So that should be fine. A um, couple other things we need to do, going back up the top. So we actually need to input an action, I've just remembered. So up here, we've called on this attack custom event, but we haven't actually set the custom event, which is a little bit backwards. We should have done this first. I'm actually gonna have to go to edit, and even though we're not going to use this, um, it does need to be there. So input, and then we're going to be going into. Oh, we're then going to be going into action mapping. All right, we've got jump there already, um, and we're going to be adding in our attack animation. And for that, we just need to go plus. And we're going to go attack. And we're actually going to make this. We do need to have it be something. So I'm going to make it R. Um, no, I'm not, because that's the same as respawn. And that would have been very silly. So I'm going to make it G instead. Go down, and you'll find G. It has to be by itself with those that, that um, picture next to it, or you're probably selecting the wrong one. Um, Okay, so now that, so that actually saves by itself. You don't need to save anything with this. So they're all fine. Now that I've done that, so I can get rid of that. And we're now gonna go input action. You might have seen before that I was a little bit confused when I only saw jump there. So I, want to ma I was a little bit confused as well what's going on. So now we've got that there, we can actually call on this a little bit more and let's finish this bit of code off. All right, so from this attack though, we're gonna be setting a flip book. All right, I do not know why that always appears up there, but I actually want that, that there, because I find it neater. And we can pull that down a bit. All right, cool, nice and neat for me. Um, cool, and then we're gonna set our flipbook as tiger attack. And then we're going to stop movement immediately. Character movement. So the thing with doing that is so that it's not just constantly moving um, and messing with our actual animation, it's going to be so. You know I mean? It's going to try to, if it's moving, it'll try to run the running animation at the same time as it's running the attack animation, which we don't want. Um, so we'll go inside a certain space, it'll attack, but it's going to stop so it doesn't run the running animation while it attacks. Um, so we've got that there. Uh, let's go from here and we're going to go to branch. All right, and then we're going to do once. So we want it to attack once at a time. Do once. But we will obviously have it getting reset. And we're setting our attack. Set attack. We need to make sure we always click that box so we're saying, yes, it's attacking. We're then going to delay, because remember, we want it to do once and then delay. So we're going to delay um, probably half a second is how long it will take to run the attack animation. And then after that delay, hey, we need to say that we're no longer attacking. So left clicking, dragging attack over, set attack again. And we're not gonna click the box then, but we do actually need to go back over here. So if we're staying in this space, we've got it set back to resetting as well. And we're gonna compile and save before this all crashes in some unlikely event. Uh, one thing I need to remember is on the X plane, we need to do a one there, compile and save. So at the moment, we've set the code so that the enemy AI will run at you um, and follow you around and not do terribly much else, which is fine. That's all we've coded thus far. So now what we need to do is actually start setting some code for them to actually be overlapping and attacking and things. Um, so first thing we need to do, so actually no, it won't be following at the moment because we haven't set the sphere events. So on begin overlap and on begin overlap, uh, end overlap, sorry. 
than these two. Don't know why they appear down there every time, but they do. And I move this over here. And this is super simple. We just want a is overlapping and is not overlapping. So let's cast to to the side scroller character. Sweet. Uh, we want the only thing to be influencing this is the 2D side scrolling character. Cool, and we want to have uh, is overlapping, setting overlapping, and because it is, hey, it is, so we can go like that, and we can tick that box there, so that way we know it is overlapping. I can actually just highlight this, Control C, Control V, move this code down a little bit, attach these together, and untick that box. So that way it'll be running it hopefully. So that in relation to it being overlapping up here, uh, where it is overlapping. So that condition being drawn from here. So in that it will run our animation when it is and not run it when it isn't. Okay. Um, we do want this though to affect its health, don't we? So um, to do that, we need to make sure we're now referencing its paw, which is going to be in the box that we created. So we need to make two more of those events, begin overlap, and we need a end overlap as well. Cool, so we've got those two. Let's take them over here. Because they are done, we're not going to have to add anything else to them. I'm pretty safe to add these here. We can actually um, I can copy and paste these two bits of code over to here because we are still just casting to the 2D side scroller character, but we now need to use the is overlapping pore. So that there, that there, that there, and that there. And now let's drag in and pore, set pore, set pore. Uh, ticking that. And connecting, whoops, connecting all of these up. Cool. And we've ticked that, not ticked the other one, so we know where we're going with this. Um, so, important thing as well, so using that do once node again, we're going to go from here and we're going to do do once. Um, and then we're going to move through. So same thing, we're going to do it once and then we're going to reset it. So it's running through these actions one time. Um, and we're going to set attacking because when we're inside that, when we're overlapping that paw, we're going to set the attacking animation and have some things happen from that. Uh, but first, we do need a delay to let the animation go off first. Um, I'm going to change that to 3.5. Wait, and now we need a branch. See, old, habit, old habits die hard, because I should be holding B and left clicking. Um, overlapping pore is our condition. And hiding that under there. Uh, and then we need to, if it's false though, I can actually just go attacking, and we're gonna set attacking to not attacking. Okay, and we're going to go from the reset there, but if it's false, we're going to reset it and have that cool little cross in the middle. All right, so that's if it's false, but if it's true, let's move on to the next part, which is the important part because we're going to now be taking away our character's health. I um, hope you guys understand what we're doing there. So false. Um, is that it's not attacking, it's not, no, it's not overlapping the pore, so it's false, and then it's not attacking, and then it goes back and resets this line of code there. So we need to move th through to the next part, and that's where we're actually casting to a 2D side scroller character. Just there, um, and we're actually getting a player character. Cool. That one just there. Cool, and now we all, all we need to add in now is similar to the code I deleted up there, which I probably could have actually reused, but hey, if we go through it again, it just means we're gonna learn more. So target is health. 
uh, it's important we drag off of that because we do have two different instances of health and if you don't have content specific picked, it might grab the wrong health. So we need to make sure we're grabbing the right one. Um, it's also important when we set the health. So if I drag over here, set health. Okay, so we're there. Um, and we're actually gonna take our um, health away. So to do that, So float minus float is just there. And how much should we take off is the next question. And I'm probably gonna take off 10 HP every time it attacks. So 10% of your health is not too bad for a, um, I think I've actually done the wrong one. You're kidding. I might go from here. There we go, so that gives you the right one no matter what. That's what I was talking about before, making sure that we get the right one and I still made the mistake. So dragging from, so that's gonna be as this 2D side scroller character, so trying to make sure we get that. And everything should be right in the cosmos there, no red mark underneath. So we've got that, so we've got our now attack set as well, and we've got that is overlapping just going to quickly double check my code up the top. You see there, quite a long piece of code. Um, we've ticked that, unticked that, cool. Just double checking everything's right before I embarrass myself by this not working. Um, minimizing that, and let's have a quick look at uh, what we've created so far. Picking up our health. We've got uh, tigers running at us, but not quite working. So let's try something a little bit different. Let's bring him down here. Double check, we've got him on negative 13.4. Let's bring him up a little bit. Press play. And a tiger isn't running. So let's try to figure this one out. Okay, so super easy mistake that I've made. Um, I was just going through and double checking all my code and I had this branch not connected. So connected from the 2D side scroller character here, um, connected through to the um, branch over here. And so that wasn't calling that. Uh, and in air, like break and in our print strings, um, that's actually how I figured it out. I added a print string to the end of that to make sure that it was getting called on when we walked towards it. Um, so now if I press play, jump over here and our tiger walks towards us. Unfortunately, it's trying to slap us with its tail, so we need to fix that. So if I go back over here to viewport, a super easy cheater way of doing this, um, if I come over to my tiger like that and we can rotate objects, and we can grab air. Still, let me grab it. Yep, grab that, and we can spin it around 180 degrees. We're gonna then move our box across. We need our box at the right end to run the appropriate animation. Compile, save. Um, now, when I press play, pick all their health up. Come over here, and it attacks us like that. You can actually see there, though. The issue is that. It's not continuing to chase us after it attacks. Um, and it's not, just gonna double check, you're a little bit higher, press play. Um, just make sure it wasn't me placing it incorrectly. Cool, all right, so it is following us. No, it doesn't, it's just attacking. So I need to quickly go through and, okay, so that could, it could be a, a test of how many mistakes can Mr. Laxton make today. So just going through again, um, and I had this ending, but not restarting again. So I've taken this node here, this execute node, and attached it to my delay node there. So when I compile and save that, and press play, and window pops out, I'll get back to full health. I'll come over here to my tiger, and you can see here, tax me, my health goes down, I can run away, he chases me. Um, and he'll keep doing that. If I'm not in the box, you'll see the attack animation go off, but if I'm not in that box, my health doesn't go down. So it is working kind of exactly as intended, um, and cool kind of looks like he's eating me when I dissolve. Press R, 
come back. So you see there that everything is working well. So having to connect that back to the delay node, um, sorry about forgetting that, and then also having this all set properly as well. So I realized long video, um, but there was a lot to get done um, and it was kind of all one character so it was important to do it all at once so we will understand where we are, where we are and what we're doing. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed it, hope you've learned a lot. Um, thank you for watching.